Some of the UI work in Firebase Studio can feel a little tricky, but I've tested two different ways to bring your own designs in, importing from Figma and importing through image recognition. These aren't perfect solutions yet, but the tools keep getting better. So instead of hitting dislike, drop me a comment if you find something new that works even better. Let's start with Figma. The Firebase Studio docs mention that when starting with an existing project, you can import from Figma using the Builder.io plugin. Open your project in Figma, select the components you want, export them, and then you should see a button called Open in Firebase Studio. So let's jump over to Figma to see this in action. I will open a new design and search for a template project we can use for the export. That looks like enough for us to export. Now that our Figma design is ready, let's find the right plugin. At this stage, we need to select the layers to export. I'll click the entire design. It found 18 components in the selection, so I'll click Smart Export. Now, according to the docs, there should be an Open in Firebase Studio button, but it doesn't show up. I'm not sure why, maybe the feature is outdated. The workaround is to build the design in Builder.io and then import it from GitHub into Firebase Studio. That same process works with any UI design tool that can export to a web framework. The export process copied the design to the clipboard, so let's navigate to Builder.io. I'll type the prompt, make a landing page, and then paste the Figma design into the prompt box. There are four framework options, but since Next.js isn't available, we'll just stick with the default value. And there it is. Now click Create Repo. This might ask you to log in or authorize, but since I'm already logged into GitHub, it is a quick step for me. The Figma design is now on GitHub. Let's copy the URL and then switch over to Firebase Studio. Click Import Repo and then paste the URL into the field. You will need to authorize Visual Studio Code to log in to your GitHub account. Now for our new environment, we need to create a dev.nix file. So click yes to generate a default IDX file. Then click take me there. After that, we wait for npm install to finish. It looks like we're hitting a version issue with Node, but don't worry. I'll show how to handle version problems. From the pnpm lock file, we can see that the package manager here isn't npm, but pnpm. That's why the web server didn't start and we can't see the page yet. So let's tell Gemini that this project came from builder.io and that it is a pnpm project. This will update the dev.nix file so the environment starts the web server correctly. That looks good. I'll click Rebuild Environment. Now we get a notification about multiple lock files. I'll copy that error into Gemini and it should delete the npm lock file. The preview still is not starting, so let's click Show Preview Log. Turns out we don't actually have node version problems this time, even though I expected them. I ran into them before with another Figma import. Still, I'll show you how to fix them since it's very likely you'll face that at some point. If you need to change the major node version, you can edit the node package here. 
If you need to update the minor version, you can set the channel to a later release, like stable 24.11 or 25.5. Now let's figure out why the preview is not showing up. The command that starts the web server clearly tells the port parameter to be 9002, but the web server is actually executing on port 8080. I've hit this before. It comes down to the double dash in the parameter. For some reason, newer node versions ignore everything after the double dash, even though older versions didn't. That's something the Firebase team should probably look into. The last time I got this working, I simply removed the double dash, so let's try that again. And there's our Figma design live on the page. From here, we can keep building. For example, I'll ask Gemini to create a pricing page. And just like that, we've got a pricing page in the same layout as our Figma design. That concludes the Figma section. Now let's move on and see how we can import a design using image recognition. This is a somewhat quick and dirty method, which may not be suitable for professional UI design. To make it cleaner, I'll also show you how to correctly import images so you can get the right background, for example. Here's our new landing page. Normally you'd create the UI in your favorite design tool, but for this demo, I'll just grab an example image from FreePick. Change the styles, fonts, colors, and buttons, but keep the text the same. Then I'll attach the image to the prompt. Here's the generated page, and it doesn't look quite like the layout we were going for just yet, but that's okay because we can definitely polish it up. To change that background image, we'll need to switch over to the code view. First, create a folder called public, then upload the background you need for the page into that folder. Copy the path to the image. Then I'll tell Gemini to change the background and paste the file path right into the prompt. We now have the new background, but wow, it looks awfully dark. Let's ask Gemini why it's coming out so dark. Turns out there was some kind of darkening layer over the background image. Now it looks much nicer. I think it looks good enough compared to the original image now. I do want to mention one last thing. The restore button is absolutely your best friend here. AI can make some pretty strange choices when it comes to user interfaces. That's the end of this tutorial. If you found it useful, share it with your friends. Happy designing!